Hey everyone, Nakamura here, and this time I've got a replay that we'll use as a guide here for Zeus against Ra. My opponent here is Rich, a really well-known uh, DM player, especially with Egypt. And this, our map is gonna be Oasis with back Town Center, so there's a lot of space to cover here in terms of, you know, expanding in general. So let's take a look at how I normally go about this. So initially, as usual, I throw down the temple and the houses. And actually for God Path, oops, for God Path, we're going to go with Athena, Apollo, and Hephaestus. Hephaestus for the Colossus and the Plenty Vault, because it's a big map. Uh, our opponent is mercenary rushing at this point, so we'll be swapping to our Fog of War now. Uh, we don't know what exact path they're taking. And in Classic, I basically make two extra Minotaurs and the heroes as well as a villager to help defend. Uh, two villagers go onto the armory and the remaining seven villagers, well six plus one really, uh, from the archaic villager that you've made, go to build a mercenary block. Now this is a horseshoe shaped formation of barracks and what this does is it makes it really difficult for the mercenaries to come in. So, Rich has sent them over there, actually, if we take off the Fog of War. He's trying to prevent a fast second town center, but we've not gone for that build order, so quite lucky in that sense. Our timings will be very efficient. We'll be making hoplites now and toxodes from two archery ranges. I normally go for five or even sometimes six military academies. Uh, one villager will be working on the market, with the remaining ones being on houses and in the row cage. Uh, we'll be actually going for three extra villagers. Uh, that is how much you can fit in if one villager is making a market. I've also seen he's gone horrors here. So that is actually really good news for us in terms of pressuring and playing late game. Uh, so he's finally arrived with the infantry mercs, which means that it's time for us to not build houses on the other side and buy ourselves some time. Uh, also making the fortress with six villagers. Uh, these are the former barracks builders actually and we're trying to defend them with the Minotaurs. This is a little bit of a, a trick I used here to quickly make uh, a wall off so that the infantry mercenaries don't get to come over fully and there you go they're timed out. I guess the cavalry marks from here we can just keep uh, popping the villagers in and out of the fortress and we're right next to the settlement we've also picked up one of the relics which is the Vegeta Eye and we're already going for a big hoplite attack. Uh, meanwhile, the scout can see that this is being walled off. So I could have placed the scout here. I think I'm actually doing it right now. Or did I just grab my idols? I think I just did. Yeah, also trying a small hoplite raid to see what's going on here. But this is pretty much already walled. So on Oasis, that's going to be tough. Leaving a lot of units behind, guys, actually. Uh, this makes sure that when Rich does the shifting sands attack on my settlement, uh, that... You know, it's relatively protected, so I can kill the units that he shifting sands with. Uh, the hoplites here are going to deny this town center and slow down Rich's expansion significantly. We've also got a Colossus that can go out and do some damage. Here's the rock, so that's going to be the spotter for the shifting sands. And we are also going to use restoration here in order to make sure that our villagers do not get killed. He actually does not shift that many units and uh, primarily just tries to focus down the town center here. Uh, so we could have been a bit better with our micro here, uh, making sure that you know the Axemen get taken out fast. But they are doing a lot of bonus damage to that settlement. Meanwhile, we've killed the Migdol on the other side. So this happens, this is normal. In an ideal case, maybe you can get the town center up uh, or you could even go Hermes and use ceasefire to prevent this from happening but that is not really standard play against Egypt you do want those Egypt. Athena upgrades for the hoplites uh, particularly Aegis shield is giving you a little bit more pierce armor and then also you get Sarissa for more hack armor very very useful so from here we're just gonna go for all-out aggression I'm actually hiding this hoplite uh, knowing that very very soon we'll be able to use the underworld passage and it looks like Rich is going after it with a single spearman but the hoplite does beat the spearman due to the way higher hit point pool on the other side we've uh, actually we've killed a house with the colossus so that's gonna reduce the amount of population available it would have been nice to kill some more of those uh, these hoplites are late to the party so we're just gonna go after the 
the barracks, but I'm not quite sure how much that will do. Meanwhile, the Hoplite just about wins this fight. And Underworld Passage is going to be ready in one second from now. So that's why I've kept all of this home. There's a Colossus with this now. And we are making Helipolis too. And the villagers are ready to go uh, to capture this town center. The Hoplite is being moved right now. This ensures that we can deny this town center. Although we're cutting it really close. And actually that Odysseus shot is slowing down the town center enough for the Hoplites to get in. So that is definitely... A very very lucky play by me but I could have done it faster uh, to to help out myself here really um, so from here on out at this town center we're gonna set up some farming over here we're gonna set up favor gathering and then once we have like six villagers on the temple we can swap the gold uh, I'm gonna put down another fortress because we still have to be worried about locust swarm actually this Make those strong is actually a pretty easy target. Uh, Bellorophon got surrounded, so I'm desperately trying to jump out. That's why he's not attacking. Uh, and yeah, we're just also going to try to take down this wall to make future raids easier. Bellorophon is now retreating, trying to get him into that Helipolis. A very nice little micro mechanic to try to save him. And uh, I've sent him home through the Underworld Passage in order to heal him back up. If you do that like 10 times, you save 4,000 gold and 60 favors, so I do advise to do that. Every new rallied unit is going directly into the Underworld Passage. Uh, one thing you can do to make this better is to actually give the Underworld a rally point over here. Then the units will immediately go there. Uh, another tornado, I know it will kill the Underworld Passage, so I'm trying to send back as many units as possible. This Colossus will be drawing fire, so I'll leave it here. And an additional bunch of human units have died, but Rich does not have a third town center, and ours is well on the way, and he's used up all of his god powers except Locust Swarm, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, he's also got rain. So we use that at some point. Uh, plenty of water is ready, but Lorfin is nearly healed up. So we're in a really good position right now, and actually, in terms of kill death, we are pretty even. So that results in us having very, very similar resources, except for gold. We have much more of gold, and we can actually start setting up uh, for our trade immediately, which is something that Rich will want to do as well after he gets the third town center. He's already got the trade and started the caravans, but right now he's only get gathering from the center TC, so that could be a bit more efficient for him. He's trying to wall the map, but we're not going to allow that. I, I, I knew that he was going to do that, so immediately I'm trying to grab portions of the map myself, building everywhere, and sending out the army to try and deny it. Now we're going to go into fast forward, because this is going to be a long game, and basically you're going to see a whole lot of attempting to trade with the armies. Uh, Rich actually had a small raid here, but didn't really get anything done with the Locust. And here I basically realized, okay, it's going super heavy on Axemen. We cannot keep going Hoplites, because they're just going to get wrecked. But if you compare the stats of the Hephaest Pist with the Axemen, um, even Horus Axemen, they're actually really close. Hephaest Pist will very, very slightly win. So I'm going to make some of those. Uh, this army got actually sent to the wrong place here. I was supposed to go here, but since I'm already rallying some infantry units, including Myrmidons at it, um, it should be pretty easy to take it out. Here you can see me spreading out the damage by attacking the adjacent pieces of the wall. So this is basically going to make sure that I am killing the entire thing in one go without having to bring a siege weapon to it. As you can see, a massive portion of the wall is already dead right now. So definitely do employ that trick when someone is wall spamming you. You can very, very easily tear down a large section of the wall if you spread out the damage like that. And here I was thinking, hey, he's on my side of the map. So it is time to uh, do a forward push with temples. I am, I knew that I was going to have a lot of gold very, very soon because I was auto-queuing a double market. I was getting some extra food here to be able to sustain that. And I've got seven uh, praying villagers on the temple, which means that I can actually triple pump Colossus. And here I've sacrificed the Hoplite army for a town center. Also attempted to take out a trade, but the big win here was that Rich's farms are now idle. So 12 farms haven't worked, 
while only 8 were affected. We have, however, on the other hand, during this rain god power, gotten a bonus for not 13, but 19 of our own farms. A huge number. Going also after his villagers at the front, as well as houses, uh, while our temples are building more colossus. And yeah, he doesn't have mummies in this one, because he went Horus, right? So... Uh, what he needs to do is to have a lot of Avengers and towers and walls and technically his human army is better. We've also attempted at some point to try and wall this uh, market off and he's forced to delete it because the pathing would definitely bug out. So unle unless he sends something here to take out the walls he had to switch the side which he's done and now he's retaking his TC but not before we get to do some massive damage to the main town center here. Actually we killed it. At this point I kind of decided, okay, our production needs to move much, much closer to the to the frontal area. And so I'm trying to make more military academies and soon we'll start making towers. As well as fortresses, because we're, we've still made like siege weapons from all the way home, right? Yeah, actually we're making heroes from here. <laughs> but we've got a lot of resources, we've still got a lot of favor. But when you send the Colossus one by one, Actually, they're pretty easy pickings, like two priests, the tower fire, uh, the army, and the avengers are going to take care of them, so you definitely want to pull them up. I think at this point, I am about to change the rally point on the temples. The, the fortresses are coming up. Uh, they're still pointing out, but not for long. Yeah, it seems now I've changed it. And because there were so many Axemen for a moment, I've started making Hippas Pist, and one of my mistakes actually was that I left it on for too long. So, we are making way too many Hippas Pists right now. Our economy is 22 villagers on gold, just a few guys on wood because we're just building. We're not making a whole lot of stuff ourselves. I'm also starting to make Petrobolos in order to weaken the defenses here from a range. And yeah, trying to weaken the walls on this side in order to maybe later be able to break through and make a bunch of buildings there. So our Colossus pulling is still not doing much, but I've actually cancelled the uh, the Hippaspis production and they train really fast, so currently they're still blocking population, but not for much longer. Now they've died and the Colossus are starting to be made in the temple, so this is our exact goal to pull them up in this situation and then uh, just plow down the middle. And that will happen in a few moments. Here you go. We have got six Colossus right now and more on the way. Still being made with 12 praying villagers. And that is going to end this town center very, very easily. We are also going to use these villagers now that have gone idle in order to help us out. Uh, because we have a lot of bank. So I've, I've not paid very good attention again. But, yeah, we were gonna use those guys to force spam a bunch of extra towers. If the villagers die, that's fine. We could use that population anyway for our army, but Rich was not gonna be able to keep up with the Colossus due to the fact that he's gone for Horus, which is now a very popular pick. So I hope this helps you guys figure out those big maps. Try to break through all the areas that you can, build everywhere and try to do these pooled Colossus pushes against Egypt. If they go for mummies, uh, so with Osiris, make sure to escort them with Bellarfin. Try to kill the mummies before you commit to Colossus, and you should be able to achieve similar results. So that's it for this. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you've enjoyed, and subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you guys the next time.